Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 117.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released April 23rd, 2014, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Bravest Warriors number 19. Things are finally winding down for our heroes. It looks like the Bravest Warriors can finally take a breather. Or can they? Could it be that they're in an illusion that just wants them to relax before it breaks and rains terror in their minds? What if there's a memory donk nearby and they just can't remember the mortal peril they're actually in? Next, we have Evil Empire number 2. The sands are shifting in America's public consciousness. One action has torn the country apart in a debate over the meaning of right and wrong, and Reese is not about to stand by as the American people support the rantings of a madman. But how far will people go to take a stand in what they believe in? We've also got Hacktivist number 4 of 4. Reeling from tragedy, Ed has to orchestrate the most elaborate and far-reaching hack so far in order to right the wrongs he's brought to Serene's doorstep in Tunisia. However, in his message to reach the entire world under the eagle eye of Agent Ori and the CIA, he will need the help of an old friend. In this gripping conclusion to Alyssa Milano's four-part series, will Nate and Ed come together in order to save each other and change the world? Next, we have Hero Bear and the Kid saving time number one of five. Why we love it? Tyler and Hero Bear are back in an all-new original adventure. We've been waiting to see these two back in action, and we're looking forward to see what shenanigans these two get up to in Saving Time, the first new Hero Bear series in years. Why you'll love it? Whether you're already a fan of this dynamic duo or new to Hero Bear and the Kid, nobody does the magic of childhood like Mike Kunkel. What it's about? Henry, the family's magical butler, is missing. It's up to Tyler and Hero Bear to figure out what happened to their friend, only they might learn a lot more about Henry than they initially thought, and be forced to get help from an unsuspecting source. We've also got Midas Flesh number 5. The ship is torn by a battle of head versus heart. Now that they have the almighty power of the Midas touch at their hands, do they have what it takes to use it on the Federation's home planet? Lives are at stake and friendships are challenged in issue number 5 of the Midas Flesh. We've also got Peanuts number 17. Snoopy loves Woodstock, but sometimes his storytelling can get a little rusty. He tends to fall asleep mid-sentence and laugh endlessly at his own jokes. As his dear friend, Snoopy must find a way to stay engaged throughout the diatribe of a lifetime. Tasty is a virtue, and many more adventures can be found in this month's latest issue of Peanuts. And we've got regular show number 12. Time is slowly running out for Mordecai and Rigby. Will they be able to reach their goal in time, or is everything doomed for the park and the rest of the world? Either way, it's definitely going to be a crazy finish. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 10 Number 2. The Scoobies are back, including Lil Giles. Revelations about a new kind of vampire menace in the blank vampire book have only just begun. Everyone has a job to do, and for Buffy, it's treading the road of past relationships. Lucky girl. Next, we have Conan the Avenger number one. Nursing his broken heart, Conan drinks himself into a stupor in a troubled city of Shambhala until a brazen act of thievery launches the Sumerian into a wild hunt and a supernatural adventure. We've also got Eltingville Club number one. After 20 years, three Eisner Awards, and a smattering of hate mail, the Eltingville comic book, science fiction, fantasy, horror, and role-playing club is finally breaking up. When Bill's dream job in a comic shop turns into a nightmare for the club, more than bridges and membership cards are burned in a fiery, fantastic finale. Next, we have Halo Escalation, number 5. Missing for 30 years, a legendary UNSC warship is discovered deep behind enemy lines. As Infinity plans a rescue mission, however, Admiral Hood's past with the ship's captain threatens to jeopardize the mission. The investigation into the UNSC saboteur continues as the journalist infiltrates an elite holy land in search of answers. We've also got Mass Effect Foundation number 10. Before joining Shepard, Master Thief Kasumi Goto was known as the most skilled burglar in populated space. Witness her early adventures as she pilfers from the galaxy's most elite and most dangerous. Next we have the massive number 22. Roaring across North Africa, a five-mile-long convoy of water trucks represents life for millions of people. Local soldiers sign on as security, and it's a high-risk job to repel pirates, saboteurs, and well-armed warlords in 120-degree heat. So why is Mary here? We've also got Mind Management number 21. Mind Management goes quiet this month in a special silent issue. But in a world of psychics and mind readers, silence screams louder than words. 
Next, we have Star Wars Legacy 2, number 14. A look into Anya Solo's prison camp past reveals a secret connection to the brutal bounty hunter who is desperate to bring her to justice, dead, not alive. But bounty hunters are only part of Anya's problems. We've also got Tomb Raider number 3. Laura Croft is on the hunt for the strange force that is terrorizing the survivors of the Endurance crew. As ancient mythological creatures appear to wreak havoc on Laura, so too do the ghosts of her past. And we've got Witcher number 2 of 5. As our heroes explore the creepy corridors of the House of Glass, monster hunter Geralt faces an army of horrific creatures ready to sink their teeth into him. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Ash in the Army of Darkness, number 6. A new adventure awaits Ash in the Dark Wood as he tries to find evil Sheila in the Book of the Dead, but Sheila is too busy trying to resurrect a new undead husband to bother with Ash. Next, we have George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones number 20. Battle is joined at the Trident, with Tyrion Lannister and the Vanguard, placed by a father determined to rid himself of an embarrassment. But the fortunes of war are not so easily manipulated, as Lord Tywin is about to learn, to his great regret, and even greater rage. For in a brilliant tactical move, the host of young Robb Stark has descended upon the army of Jaime Lannister outside the besieged gates of River Run, and has won a great victory and a prize that might end the war before it has fairly begun. We've also got Lady Rawhide number 5 of 5. The final battle for the heart and soul of old Mexico begins. Lady Rawhide has fought for the people, a relentless battle against corruption and oppression, along the way becoming a folk hero to countless citizens she's aided. But with the mercenary forces of Yankee Silver and Rail Barons on the march, the soldiers of the corrupt governor crushing any who stand before them, and a violent band of female vigilantes fighting a war against them all, is this Lady Rawhide's last ride? Next, we have Robotech Voltron number 3 of 5, bi-monthly. Commander Keith Kogain struggles to find out what happened to his Voltron team as Colonel Edwards has top robotechnologists toiling furiously to re-engineer the recovered lines back into working order, but one of them is missing. A universe away, the SDF-1 puts up a gallant defense of the planet Iris, but how long can advanced alien technology hold out against the forces of black magic? In the midst of all this, Chiron the Backstabber brings his trademarks in trade a treachery in his quest to claim the prize of the SDF-1 for himself. We've also got The Shadow Now, number 6 of 6. Final issue, New York has been plunged into darkness and chaos looms as Khan attempts to restore his youth while his granddaughter seeks to stop the shadow. This is the moment of truth as the shadow's plans at long last revealed begin to unfold. But will it be enough to stop Khan and save New York City? It's the final chapter of The Shadow's Return. Next we have Sherlock Holmes' Moriarty Lives, number 3 of 5, bi-monthly. Driven by a promise to a dying woman and a vow of vengeance, the world's most notorious villain must take on a madman who is as brilliant as he is dangerous. In deep disguise, Moriarty works his way deeper into the trust of his new enemy, but even as he forms new alliances and plots new treacheries, his own allies begin to move against him. But when charged with a task too sinister to contemplate, Moriarty must find a way to maintain his cover and pursue his plot. It's mastermind versus mastermind as the plot thickens. And we've got Warlord of Mars number 35. John Carter blunders into a trap set by the brutal tyrant laying waste to the Red Planet, but in doing so, the tyrant unwittingly reveals his greatest secret and only weakness. It's just what Carter and his family need to strike back if they survive. From IDW Publishing, we've got 24 number 1, Jack Bauer Lives Again. Before the Emmy Award-winning drama returns to your television with Live Another Day, Find out what the heroic agent has been up to in the several years following the events of the final season. Restarting the clock on the high-octane saga or writing sensation Ed Brisson of Secret Avengers and Eisner Award nominee Michael Gatos of Alias. Next, we have Seventh Sword number 1. Daniel Cray, a samurai mercenary, stumbles upon the legendary city of Zen Zion, a mysterious desert outpost under siege from a vicious warlord. The peace-loving citizenry beg Cray to defend them. Next we have City, The Mind and the Machine number 3. Ben has uncovered a terrible secret about the accident that cost him his sight, but will his growing connection to the city help him survive long enough to exact revenge? Next we have Danger Girl Mayday number 1 of 4. An all-new cast of sinister characters, secrets from Deuce's past, and the shocking return of the deadliest and sexiest Danger Girl villain of all time. Fans of the original and best-selling Danger Girl series can't miss what's sure to be the wildest adventure of the year, plus a mysterious major lurks in the wings. 
We've also got G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number 201. After last month's landmark issue, G.I. Joe is ready to make a change. With Cobra on the run and the pit in shambles, Duke leads the team into a brave new era as new teams are formed and G.I. Joe finds another base of operations. Next we have Godzilla, Rulers of Earth, number 11. Undersea adventure awaits. The Devonian threat has been identified and monsters across the globe converge in the depths of the ocean. As the humans test new weapons and methods, Godzilla will be forced to face some of his most fearsome foes. We've also got Popeye Classics number 21. Featuring an epic tale, Popeye in interplanetary battle, it's as wild as you might expect. Co-starring everyone's hilarious favorite, Jay Wellington Wimpy, plus lots more spinach-fueled fun. Next we have Rogue Trooper number 3. As the battle for Strongpoint Charlie goes into overdrive, Rogue Trooper is up against enemies who aren't even on the same battlefield as him. And something even worse is closing in fast because his creators want him back, dead or alive. We've also got Star Trek number 32. The concluding chapter of I, Enterprise, the flagship of the fleet, is now a sentient entity with a mind of its own, and it doesn't take kindly to the biological invaders inside its hull. How do Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the crew find an enemy upon which their very survival depends? This all-new adventure is overseen by Star Trek writer-producer Roberto Orsi. Next we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 33. The Turtles return to New York to find a city in Shredder's grip. The Turtles will have to use all their skills and stealth to survive, but is Casey ready for a homecoming welcome from Hun? We've also got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles new animated Avengers number 10. It's Valentine's Day and love is in the air, but not for spider bites. The surly mutant has had enough of the mushy stuff and is going to make sure that everyone is just as miserable as he is. The turtles will have to act quickly or else the entire city will become ensnared in his evil web. And we've got Transformers Robots in Disguise number 28, Earthfall. The Autobots return to Earth with Optimus Prime in command, but what brought them back and what terrifying secret do the humans hold? A bold new era begins here. From Image Comics, we've got Dead Body Road number 5 of 6. Hold up and under siege, Gage and his accomplices may have run out of road, but not bullets, or heads to put them through. Next, we have Five Ghosts number 11, Lost Coastlines part 5. What horrors await on the Island of Dreams? Find out in the penultimate chapter of Lost Coastlines. We've also got Fuse number 3, The Russia Shift part 3. Whoever thought two dead bums could be such a pain in the ass? Now even the mayor's office is under scrutiny, but even an old Muscovite like Clem Ristovich knows that's a whole new bag of hurt to be poking. And why the hell is Ralph researching terrorist groups? Next we have Ghosted Number 9. Jackson Winters may think he knows everything about the supernatural world, but the jungles are filled with all sorts of ghosts. We've also got Lazarus Number 8, Lift Part 4. Forever calls on the daggers. The Barretts reach the final stage of their journey as all threads converge on Denver for the lift. Next, we have Manhattan Projects number 20, Finite Oppenheimers Forever. High stakes as the imagined reality of the Mad Oppenheimers finally collides with the Manhattan Projects proper. We've also got Mice Templar 4 Legends number 9. Mad King Icarus's destruction of the Great Ash Tree has galvanized the entire Templar remnant around the legend of Carrick for both good and ill. While the charismatic Field Marshal Peyton seeks control of the young mouse's legacy, the schemes of Ronan enlist intervention by the Bats of Meave to restore his own fading leadership no matter the cost. Next we have Protectors Inc. number 6. It began with two seemingly unconnected deaths, a young woman washed up on the shore of Lake Michigan and the Huntsman, whose death Protectors Inc. insisted was an accident. But now the lines connecting these two events are becoming clear, and Lieutenant Detective John Riley finds himself on the edge of a conspiracy that may shatter everything the public believes about their heroes, assuming he can survive the investigation. We've also got Saviors number 4. After last issue's mayhem and slaughter, Thomas is alone, hunted by alien invaders in a strange town where the Day of the Dead celebration does little to help things. And when Thomas manages to trap an alien to learn its secrets, is he unwillingly setting up his own death too? We've also got Sheltered number 8. A coup is on the horizon. Violence erupts outside Safe Haven's borders. Next we have Shotgun Wedding number 4 of 4. Mike Stone wants nothing more than to marry the woman of his dreams. Denise is smart, sexy, teaches the second grade, and loves Mike more than anything in the world. What she doesn't know is that Mike is one of the world's top assassins and was once engaged to a fellow assassin named Chloe. 
and when Mike abandoned Chloe on their wedding day, she vowed revenge. Next, we have Skull Kickers number 26, A Dozen Cousins and a Crumpled Crown, part two in this special issue. They're all special, but whatever. The History of Dwarves, the short version. We've also got Sovereign number two, An Emperor Lays Dead with no successor named for his vacated throne. Visitors from a distant land discover that there's more in the world than their philosophies know, and three masked outcasts come bearing word of a coming apocalypse. We've also got Thief of Thieves number 20. The hit list starts here. Conrad may have pulled off his last heist, but not without making some new enemies. Is anyone in his life safe? Next, we have Undertow number 3 of 6. Surrounded by bloodthirsty humans, boiling in their land suits as the sun rises, Breda Meshargal and Ukinu Ali's team comes face to face with the primordial god. He's never killed a god before, but that doesn't mean a Shargal isn't up for trying. The Dry Frontier takes another life as the pulp monster adventure continues. Next, we have Walking Dead number 126, All Out War, Conclusion, This Changes Everything. And we have Zero number 7, Zero and Zizek come to a place 56 miles away from Juarez, Mexico. There's business to be made in human misery. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Eternal Warrior number 8, is the Eternal Warrior finally out of time? Every moment in the centuries-long life of Gilad Anipata has led to this moment, far removed from the modern day, standing resolute at the last tattered edge of the civilization. The Eternal Emperor of 4001 AD is about to make the hardest choice of all, and 2,000 years of Valiant Heroes will feel the fallout. Don't miss a moment as the very first vision of Valiant's all-new future timeline reaches a milestone turning point. And we have Harbinger number 22, all new arc, Death of a Renegade, Part 1 of 3. Peter Stanchek and his wayward team of teenage renegades thought they had found freedom. They thought they could get their old lives back. They thought they could bring down Toyo Harada and the Harbinger Foundation. They were wrong, and now one of them will die. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he's got issues com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney. And I've got issues.